Hey, this is Brian, and today we're going to be installing the all-new Vivid Screen by BeamerTech. Whenever you're working on any electrical components, always make sure to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to begin with some basic dash assembly. So we're going to remove this piece of trim up here. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and remove this bottom piece right here. So what you want to do is just go ahead and take your, your trim tool, and then you just want to slide it in, and then just gently rock this down. Now there is a light on the other side of this. Um, some cars don't have the light, but most of them do. So just go ahead and unplug that and set this out of the way in a safe spot. Next, what you want to do is just get your hand up here. You don't need any special trim tools and just very gently start to rock this off. Just be very careful on this side because the trim is very thin. Okay. So once you have all of that off, what we're going to do next, there's two connections. There's one for the climate dial and there's also one for the hazard and then the door lock and unlock. So what you wanna do, just go ahead and get your hand behind there and press out this button. It presses out with, with relative ease and there's a connection. So just disconnect that. It's going to make it a lot easier to do it before you actually remove the trim because of the way that the plastic is in there. So just go ahead, you can pull this down and just get, disconnect that. So here's a shot at the back. So this is the plug that works for the, the climbing control. And then the other connection would be normally in here, uh, which is this larger one for the hazard and also the door lock and unlock. So go ahead and place this trim in a safe place. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and remove the face plate. So to do this, you will need a T20 bit. That's a, a Torx T20. Go ahead and remove the four screws. There's one right up here, right over here. And then there's just two on the bottom. And then what's going to happen is there's going to be a plug on the back of this. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect that once this is out. All right, so once those are out, just go ahead and just gently lift this off and then just disconnect your connection here. Then set your faceplate in a safe spot. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and remove the head unit. Now, typically when you're going to be installing the Vivid Screen 8.8 inch screen, there is only going to be the two screws, the two T20s that hold this in place. Now, if you have a full navigation, it may also be four. So just go ahead and remove these two screws. Now what you can do is gently slide your head unit out. As you can see here, we have laid down a ton of microfiber towels. You wanna make sure that you never scratch any of your trim. So just go ahead, just very carefully pull this out. All right, so now what you wanna do is you look on the back of the head unit and there's this large big black harness and it looks like the one that's going to come in the wiring harness kit with your vivid screen this is called a quad lock the way that these work is it has a large lever so what you do is you go ahead and pull that back and then you can pull the entire connection out so just go ahead press that lever down and then you can just slide it out now when you're looking at the quad lock you're going to notice that on one side there's going to be four circles this is where the optic cable goes so what we need to do is we need to transfer this over to the new quad lock. There's a little pin on the side, so if you take something like a pick tool, just go ahead and loosen, just pull that tab out, and your optic cable will come out. Now what you wanna do is take your new quad lock harness, and in that same spot, it's going to be that end spot, just take that optic cable and slide it right in until it clicks in place. Now what you can do is take the other end of the Beamer Tech harness, go ahead and pl plug that into the factory quad lock and snap that into place. Then once you've done that, go ahead and press the new quad lock into the back of your, your head unit and then press down on the tab to lock everything in place. On the quad lock harness, you'll also notice two RCAs. These are going to be your audio out if you're installing a smart view. The end of the wire also has a white connection. This is going to plug into the new Vivid screen. All right, so once you're here, what you wanna do, just take this white connection we basically need it to come out right here. So just reach your hand back. There's a couple holes that you could feed it through. Make that come down there. And if you are installing a smart view, what you can do is go ahead and grab your RCA. So plug red to red and white to white. And you can route these under the unit. So just go ahead, once you've done that, make sure that this stays clear and just slide all of this out of the way. Just make sure that you reach up behind here because that, that big block harness, the quad lock, may be in the way. 
to just make sure that everything is positioned where that'll slide back in. What I would recommend is right now just leave it as is because we do have to run some other wires. So this way, if you need to pull it back out, you're not putting the screws in and taking them back out. So at this point, there are two T20 screws holding the screen in. Let's go ahead and remove these. Then what you can do is just very carefully just wiggle up on the screen. Now, if you need a little bit more slack, what you can do is just kind of maneuver the head unit around and that'll give you just a little bit more slack. Then on the screen, there's a video cable. So just go ahead and press that tab down and just wiggle this out. Just pull it straight out like so. Then you can go ahead and set your screen to the side. Here's an example of the size difference of the small 6.5 inch screen and then the massive 8.8 .8 inch screen. All right, so once you're here, go ahead and take that white connection that's connected to the quad lock. Just route it between your vents and have it come up the hole right here. And just go back and just push it under the vent. Then you're going to have another harness that has a white connection on one side. It has HDMI and then also USB. Go ahead through that same exact hole. Route that up there. What we're going to do is we are going to mount a smart view underneath the head unit. Then lastly, go ahead and grab your RCA harness and do the exact same thing. Next, what you wanna do before installing is set the dip switches. So as you can see, dip switches set to the left are on and dip switches set to the right are off. So go ahead and set these to the configuration of your vehicle. Then what you can do is you can plug in the three harnesses that we have here, the three white ones, and then also the video cable. So go ahead and do that now. So we'll plug that one in there. And what I like to do is I like to plug these in and then I like to plug the video in last since the video is on top of these other ones here. And just make sure that you have the little clip on the bottom. Okay, so all three of those are clipped in. Then what we can do is we can go ahead just clip in that connection and then just slowly and carefully pull these down as you lower your screen. Okay. Then what you can do is take two of your T20 screws and go ahead and secure that screen in place. Now at this point, if you're installing a rear view camera or a front view camera, what you do is you find the appropriate connection for the power and then also the appropriate connection for the video feed. Uh, in this case, we're just installing a smart view. So what you can do is you can go ahead and you can just tape these and then mount these out of the way. So after you've taped these up, what I like to typically do is just wrap it in some 3M double-sided molding tape. And this is padded too, so it, it may, it'll make it so it won't rattle. Just go ahead and mount these to the side here. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to get our HDMI and also our USB down under here. So there's a couple ways that you can do it. Um, typically what you can do is you can just run it through this little hole right here. So just run them across, just do it one at a time. You might need to pull your head unit out if you haven't done so already. So pull this one through. Next, what you wanna do is go ahead and route the USB through. Now this is a rubber cover, so you can actually go ahead and take that off. And that'll make it a little bit easier to route through and then you can just go ahead and just put that back on just like so okay at this point you can go ahead you can push in your head unit and we are going to route these two wires one's going over right here and then one's going to go right here and then this way everything is going to be easily accessible underneath so let's go ahead and put two of those screws back in Now at this point, if you're running a smart view, you're going to have the other end of those RCA cables. So what you can do is you can reach your hand down here and then reach your hand up under the trim. Typically you can do this without using any special uh, wire feeding tools. We just wanna pull this out down here towards the bottom. All right, so once you've run your audio cable, just let that hang. We're just gonna get back to that in just a second. So for the time being, what we're going to do is we are going to finish installing the smart view. So you'll see that you have the HDMI and also the USB. So on your smart view, first go ahead and put two strips of 3M molding tape. This is going to get mounted under your head unit so it stays rock solid. So what you wanna do, over here it says power in five volts and just go ahead and get the included cord. Just plug that in there. 
then what you can do is just plug the USB in, like so. Then do the exact same thing with the HDMI. Just go ahead and plug that in one side. And then in the Smart View, there's also an HDMI. So go ahead and plug that in. Then what we can do is we can remove this mounting tape. All right, once you've removed the tape, just go ahead and just hold this under the head unit for about 10 seconds or so. And this is going to make sure that everything is going to stick good. All right, so then once you're done, go ahead and put some zip ties and secure all of the extra wiring. Again, what I like to do is I like to use the 3M double-sided molding tape just to make sure that everything is going to stick into place. So then what you can do is you can go ahead and route these wires in here. All right, so once your head unit is screwed in place, what you can do is you can go ahead and take your face plate. Just go ahead and connect this back in. You may just need to feed this wire in just a little bit. And just line this up. Then while you're here, you can go ahead and reinstall your light. You just push the bottom in first, and then the top will clip into place. All right, so now what you can do, go ahead and plug in your climate control and then feed your door lock and unlock through this little hole here and once you've done that you can just go ahead and line everything up start to press everything back into place just be very careful when you're on the other side of the car. Then last, get your hazard and your unlock switch. Go ahead and plug that in. And then just clip it into place. So at this point, all of this is complete. Let's go ahead and finish running that audio cable. All right, the last part of the process is we need to get the audio cable to this aux jack in here. So what you can do is if you just have this rubber tray, just go ahead and slide it out. There's no clips or anything. It comes out very easy. Then what you can do is there's a bunch of holes in here. Just go ahead and grab yourself a piece of wire and you're just going to feed it straight down. And once you have your wire down, what you can do is just get a piece of electrical tape and just tape it to your wire feeder. I'm just going to leave a little tab on here so it's easy to get off. Just very carefully just guide this up through that hole. And with that tab you just go ahead and release the tape. Then once you have this up what you can do is just go ahead just plug it into aux. What I like to do is just push it over to a corner then you can get this tray and you just push it right back down and it's, it's very subtle and then if, if you have any leftover wire that's not tucked in on the side here, you can just go ahead and just press it underneath. All right, so let's go ahead and start the car. Take a look. So as you can see, it looks fantastic and there's absolutely no stretch. Again, if you have entry nav, you're able to code it so that there's no stretch. If you don't have entry nav, you can still use the screen. There will be just a little bit of stretch and we can just show some pictures of what that would look like. Uh, one of the other benefits of this is if you hit option, you can go into a split screen mode, which is amazing um, because that's something that this car did not come with the capability to do. And if you hold menu, because we put a smart view in here, if you hold menu for about five seconds, it'll flip over to the smart view screen, which allows you to mirror your mobile device. So here's a look at some real time mirroring with a smart view on an iPhone. Um, this system also works very well with Androids. Again, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you are interested in a vivid screen for your BMW, be sure to visit us online at keysmotorsports.com or send us an email at info at keysmotorsports.com. As always, be sure to give us a like, make sure you subscribe, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching and have a great day.